Monday morning! This is Fun Fun Function, a Monday morning show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas, and having fun. In order for this video to make sense, you need to have watched my previous video on funk tours, uh, because I make a lot of corrections to that video in this video. You also need to be familiar with the concepts of map and promises. Uh, if you're feeling rusty on those, uh, links to videos about them is in the description. I would like to geek out on the definition of functors for one more video, because the last video got a very big response. I didn't expect to be people, people to be so interested in functors, to be honest. Uh, but it also got a lot of, uh, of good corrections from some wonderful people in the functional programming community. Especially Dr. Boolean uh, on Twitter, who deserves an extra shout out for helping me. You should really follow him if you're interested in functional programming. Today I'm going to make a stab at a more accurate definition than the one I made in the previous video. In the last video I said that functors are functions like map. That is not correct. Functors are objects that have a map method. So for example, it is array that is the functor because it has an implementation of map. It's not map that is the functor, it is the object that is implementing map that is the functor. The most common example of a functor in the world is the JavaScript array. Other objects that are very often implemented as functors are promises, streams, or trees, for example. So you can think of functors as um, sort of the generic equivalent of array having a map method. Functors are things in general, not just arrays, that we can map. In the last video, I mentioned that array.filter is a functor. That is completely wrong! Filter has nothing to do with functors. Nothing at all. It's objects that implement map that we are interested in. And the reason I got confused about this is that the community is a bit confused. There are a lot of blog posts describing uh, functors as uh, functions and uh, referring to filter as a functor. Um, and the reason that the community is confused is that in category theory, uh, the subset of math that relates to functors, a functor is actually a function. And to make matters even more confusing, the, uh, the word functor is often used in computer science to be completely synonymous with higher order function. <laughs> However, hope is not lost for a common definition. 95% of the functional programming community, uh, including Haskell, Clojure, uh, F-Sharp, Scala, settled on the definition that objects that implement map are functors. And to keep us sane, that is the definition that we are going with in this video. So what exactly do we mean when we say that uh, the object should implement map? I mean, we cannot just implement map and have it return <laughs> and call it a functor. There needs to be some goddamn rules. If I had a bigger beard, <sighs> I would now refer to the functor laws in Haskell. Yeah, but uh, the, the functor laws are great and all, but I think that they sacrifice understandability uh, in order to be correct and terse. It's good to check them out eventually, but, uh, you know, the HTML spec is not a good place to start learning web development either. Instead, let's have a look at the functor that we all know and love, Array. And look at what it is that makes it qualify as a functor. So here we have an array of dragon objects, and we use map to just get the names of the dragons. Again, I would like to stress here that map itself is not what we refer to with the word functor, it is array that is a functor because it has a map method. We're going to explore three crucial things that array map does in order to qualify as a functor. But before I do that, I must show you the worst thing ever. Let's, let's talk about three crucial things that 
uh, array.map does in order to qualify array as a functor. One, transformation of contents. The basic idea of the functor is that uh, the map functions takes the contents of the functor and uses the callback pass to map to uh, transform the contents into something else. This, this function right here is the transformation function. It transforms the dragon object into just a dragon name, a string. And this transformation, that's the first barrier of entry that array passes in order to be called a functor. Some people, uh, and these are the same some people that like uh, homework or to do taxes, like to point out that the uh, transformation callback that we pass to um, array.map actually gets two arguments, uh, the object and the array index, which kind of stretches the definition of a functor. But I think that there is a point where a secret club becomes so secret that it has no members. Uh, so let's just give array.map some slack here. Promises are often implemented as functors. The promises built into ECMAScript 6 do not have a map function, but uh, most promise libraries do. So for example, if you use Bluebird, you can do this. If we look at this code, we create a promise that yields a dragon object after, after two seconds. And when we have it, we map the name and uh, then write that name to the console. And note that the map callback is exactly the same as the previous example. In that example, we saw the array functor shielding the transformation callback from the complex reality that there are more dragons than one, while the promise functor instead protects the transformation callback from the complex reality that there isn't any dragon until later. I'd like to make a small detour here and remind you that this is a really good example of what functional programming is all about. Breaking problems into teeny tiny super simple functions and then composing those functions together using super cool glue like functors. Functional programming allows us to do this, create a solution separately for iterating arrays, uh, waiting for objects until later, and actually extracting the name. And once we've created those solutions and have them separately, we can easily compose them together. And since they're separate Lego blocks, we can reuse these things all over our app. So we don't clutter them with uh, waiting logic or uh, array iteration logic. That's solved now in one place. And this allows us to reuse way more code than we would generally be able to in an object-oriented world. Two, maintain structure. The second thing that array.map does in order to uh, qualify uh, array for the title of functor is that it maintains structure. If you call map on an array that is three items long, you will get out an array that is three items long. Array map doesn't change the length of the array, it doesn't return null, and it doesn't return anything other than an array with the same length. Like you see in the example, we transform the individual values contained in the array, and we even change their types, actually. But map cannot alter the structure of the array itself. And this is why this string functor in the last example was wrong. It does get the um, intuitive spirit of functors, right? So if that example made you get functors, uh, then don't worry, you don't need to erase that part of your brain. But string doesn't strictly work as a functor, even if we give it a map method, because functors need to be able to contain any type. Functors are meant to be generic containers for anything, uh, like array or uh, promise or stream or tree. String doesn't work as a functor because it means that we cannot maintain structure. Let's say that a transformation callback returned false and try to shove that into uh, a string, ABC. Like we just, uh, it doesn't compute. A string with a map method welded onto it gets the spirit of the functor right, but it needs to be a container for any object in order to be called a functor. And String isn't that. Three, return a new functor. The third and final thing that array map does 
in order to be functor material is that the value that map returns must be another functor of the same type. It's because of this trait that we can chain map calls like this. Here, we have the same array of dragons, but after we extract the names, we also get the length of each name. Because the first map function returns a functor, we can keep calling map on it. You can do this map, 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 map chaining with uh, promises or streams or any other functors. It's, it's pretty cool. In summary, a functor is an object that has a map method. Arrays in JavaScript implement map and are, therefore, functors. Promises, streams, and trees often implement map in functional programming languages, and when they do, they too are considered functors. The map method of the functor takes the functor contents and transforms them using the transformation callback that is passed to map. Map then returns a new functor of the same type, which contains the transformed values. Today has been a little dry and a little theoretical, I know. We have explored the definition of a functor even more, and we have looked at the most common functor, array. But in the next episode, we are going to have a look at the coolest and most underused functor, streams. As usual, that episode will be released on Monday 0800 GMT. Do not miss it, put it in your calendar. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.